Graham Chapman, your friendship and your collaboration. I, I, you know, in doing the research, was finding out how important that was. You guys were really close. Yes, uh, it, was, it was very strange. We met at the end of my first year, which was his second year. Although he was actually slightly younger than me, he went on to uh, Bart's Hospital to become a proper, proper qualified medical doctor. And uh, uh, the first time I met him was at an aud uh, audition for the Footlights show that year, and, and we both failed to get in the cast. And um, we had a coffee afterwards. The extraordinary thing is that when I said goodbye to him, I remember thinking, I don't particularly like him. <laughs> Isn't that extraordinary? Then uh, three months later, we came back and we both found that we were on the committee of the Footlights and we started working together and we started to write. And he was a, he was a very funny guy. He was, he was wonderfully eccentric and enormously naughty. Um, the Oxford Union once asked him if he would come and speak in a big debate they were having on nuclear disarmament. Now, I don't know why they asked Graham, but you know, he was a well-educated, very bright. So they asked him to come along and they had a couple of cabinet ministers there, a labor minister and a conservative minister. And they had one or two political pundits there. So Graham turned up for this very serious event dressed as a carrot. <laughs> He got this skin-tight orange costume <laughs> with a little green sprig hat like this. And, of course, the ministers were absolutely astonished to find themselves sitting next to a carrot <laughs> discussing assured mutual destruction or whatever it used to be. And when it was his turn to speak, he got up and, and just didn't say anything. He just stood there. <laughs> Everybody waited for him to start speaking, and he never said anything. He just stood there with his little hat. And he was supposed to speak for 12 minutes, and everyone was supposed to shut up for 12 minutes, and he just stood there for 12 minutes. <laughs> Complete silence, and people started shouting at him, and he just stood there. <laughs> And after 12 minutes, he just sat down completely proud that he'd ruined the debate. <laughs> and he could, he could do this kind of extraordinary thing. He once accepted an award. We were given an award by one of Rupert Murdoch's <laughs> papers, <laughs> The Sun. And we, we said, well, we don't want to accept an award from the sun, do we? Um, and Graham said, oh, let me go. I'd really like to go. <laughs> uh, and when, when they announced the award, it was, it was being um, uh, presented by Reginald Maudling, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, oh, really? you know, number two or three in the government. And Graham walked up to collect the award and suddenly started, fell to the ground and crawled up <laughs> the aisle... Uh, screaming, 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 and then he crawled up the steps. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> Reggie Maudlin was not used to this sort of thing in, in the cabinet meetings, so he got quite terrified. And Graham came up screaming, <laughs> stuck his hand out to take the award. Ma Maudlin sort of stepped back and gave it to me like that. <laughs> and he went off and went back again screaming. So it was just extraordinary how, how silly he could be. <laughs> and brave. And brave, yes, yes, he... he but but he, other times, you see, there was another side to it which was a bit odd. I mean, once he was in his favourite pub in Highgate with his friends and um, somebody started annoy, annoying him and he just sort of got... He went over unzipped his fly, took his willy out, and put it in the guy's drink. That might be a little too far. <laughs> yes, a little too far. 